This is a CPU I'm going to be using. It's an Intel i7. I already unboxed it. And inside the box, you get the heatsink, which comes with thermal paste already applied to it. But I'm not going to be using this heatsink. I have an aftermarket one that I'll be using. This is a this is a processor. And back here is what's going to go onto the motherboard. So this side is going to be facing up. And this is where the thermal paste will be sitting on, on top of the processor. This right here is the motherboard. These are the layout of it. This part right here is for your memory, your video card, and your PCI connections. This is where your CPU goes. This is where you attach your hard drives and or CD players. Over here are your components for your speakers, USB devices, and keyboards. First, I'm going to install the CPU. You have to pull this lever down, pull it out, and it comes up. For this board in particular, you pull this latch up, and there's a little protective coating, or I'm sorry, cap for your CPU package, or for your CPU, in order not to mess up the pins. It instructs me not to remove this unless I'm installing a CPU. So I'm going to stop right here and unpack my CPU. Going back to the motherboard, since I'm now ready to install the CPU, I can remove this cap. You don't want to touch these pins or any moisture or anything because that's what's going to cause the CPU to work. The CPU can only fit one way. The CPU has a triangle that tells you which direction it should be. Some motherboards will actually have the matching triangle for you to connect it to. Unfortunately, this one doesn't. This is the back. You don't want to touch any of this. So I'm going to slowly put it in. And it should just fall into place. Everything's lined up. Now I'm going to put the cover on. So here we go. Now if you listen closely, you'll hear the crunch. Okay, now everything's installed. I'm going to install the stock cooling fan for the CPU. It already has thermal paste added on it but always check to see if it's there already before installing it because you'll need it in order to cool the, fan, the CPU so what you do is you have these pins over here just flip it over and plug it in into the holes which are right over here it's made out of plastic the pins but it's still a good idea to be careful because last thing you want to do is scratch anything Now that I have the heatsink in, installed, I'm going to plug it into the motherboard. The motherboard should label the CPU fan plug, which is over here on my motherboard. So now I'm going to plug it in, and I'm done. I have six slots for memory. I had to put one stick into here first, another stick into this one, and a third into this. If I want to add more sticks, I start back at the beginning of the row and work my way down. For now, I'm just going to put in one memory stick. And you want to match the notches on the board with the one up here. Okay, it's matched, so I'm going to push it in, and it snaps in place, and I'm set. So now, we're going to move on to installing the motherboard into your computer case. I'm going to place the board into the case. But, before you do that, some cases will require you to install pins onto the case itself, which is right here, that 
uh, copper or bronze looking one and it's labeled A and C that tells you which kind of board it could take. The A is for the ATX and the C is for the micro. So you want to put those pins in all the A's on the board since what I have is an ATX board. So I have them all already there. This is the shield for the motherboard that goes on the inside of the case to label what is what when you plug something in. In order to install this, you actually want to go inside the case first because you can see right here how it has a kind of barrier right here. So you go inside the case and you push it out. I'm going to have the shielding installed and the motherboard installed. I'm going to connect the power supply to the motherboard. First, you want to connect the pins for it. This board takes an 8 pin. Some boards may take a 4 pin. So when you buy your board, make sure your power supply has appropriate pins. So I'm going to connect my 8 pin, which is right here, onto the board. Now, the good thing about this, it can only fit in one way so you can't really put it in the wrong way and now I'm going to plug in the other power supply for the motherboard which is this one and it's a 24 pin older mother motherboards will use a 20 pin and it goes right oops sorry it goes right in here and again this can only fit in one way okay and it's in Okay, now that I have the power plugged into the motherboard, down here are USB connectors and audio connectors. I'm not really going to explain how to install these just because they're all different with other boards. My USB connector can be different than what your USB connector can be. So I would highly recommend referencing the manual for this. But a quick hint, as you can see, there's a pin missing. So when you connect your USB cable, it will also have a pin missing. That lets you know what orientation it should be in. Now over here, in this first top slot, I'm going to install the graphics card. All right, this is gonna be a tight fit because the case isn't really that big and the card isn't that short either. So let's try and do this. Have to go in at an angle. All right, I have the video card plugged in and installed onto the motherboard. And I have it screwed in as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and close back the case and power it on and hopefully everything turns out okay. Alright guys, I went ahead and I plugged in everything from the back like the USB, the um, audio cables, all that stuff. So once you, turn, once you plug in your power supply for the first time, I would recommend waiting a few seconds before turning it on like powering the computer on. Turn the power supply on, but just wait a few seconds. Now, a good indication to let you know if the board is getting powered is if anything on your computer lights up. And I don't know if you can see it. There's a green light down there. That means the board's getting power. So, I'm going to turn it on. And hopefully, this is not an epic fail. And there's the lights. And here's the monitor. Okay, and there we go. So everything seems to have worked so far. So right now I'm going to go ahead and um, set the computer up and install Windows.